Learning nouns is definitely not rocket science. It's really a matter of learning nouns off by heart. How easy and enjoyable it is ultimately depends on three things: your attitude, your learning habits, and whether you feel in charge. As with most things in life, the enjoyment you get out of something depends on your mindset and motivation. So learning German nouns can be a mindless chore or a fascinating journey. It's pretty much up to you. Assuming you are not forced into learning German, the discovery of a foreign wordscape really should be quite fascinating, and even more so because it becomes a journey into the past too, with so many visible similarities between English and German. So instill yourself with a good dose of curiosity, and discover words rather than learn them. Enter a new world and world view. Treat yourself to a new German word every morning, the way you open the little window of the advent calendar, counting down to Christmas. And remember that vocabulary is called Wortschatz, word treasure in German. So treat it as such and start hoarding the gems you pick up. Apart from motivation, there are also a number of simple learning strategies that can make your life a lot easier and save a lot of time. The key is to bite off small, regular morsels rather than trying to swallow the lot in one go. Make it a pleasurable habit to learn a few new German words every day. It all adds up, and it's much easier to take in and be retained by your brain. Try to find a regular daily time slot of a mere five minutes and turn it into a ritual like cleaning your teeth. After a week or two, you'll hardly have to think about learning your German words any more. As I said, learning words for things is really like opening up a new world. So make it your own world. Of course, don't ignore the vocabulary presented to you in your course book, but also make your own choices in what you learn according to your own interests and needs. If you learn for yourself, you'll feel a lot less pressured by exams and similar external motivations. This is especially true for what we call the active vocabulary. You'll find that it's a lot easier to understand words passively than to use them actively. So let's have a look now at how you can actively practice your nouns and implant them in your memory for instant use. The most important thing in practicing nouns and indeed all vocabulary is that you don't only look at them in your book, but also speak, write, and actively use them. And of course, in the case of German nouns, always together with their articles and plurals. Let's have a look at a few ways of doing that. The noun files. Even though you have a vocabulary section in your course book, it's still worth copying nouns on separate cards or creating flashcards on your computer, especially the ones you really want to know. That way, you will have written them at least once, and you can then use the cards randomly to repeat and learn your vocabulary in various ways and whenever you like. Use dead time, like sitting in a bus. Waiting for a train, etc., to go through your cards. You can take a little stack along with you every day. It's useful to write the German word, including the article and plural, on one side, and the English equivalent on the other side. That way, you can just browse through them, self-test your vocabulary, or use them playfully in various ways. You'll be able to use your cards in nearly every chapter for some of the learning games we suggest. In short, cards help you to become more flexible, mobile, and self-reliant learners. Inventory. Here's a way to make good use of your cards. Have a look around your room and pick the objects you think are important for your basic existence. Take some sticky tape, tape your cards to these objects, and leave them hanging there for a while. Just by looking at them now and then, you'll soon remember all of these words. A word of advice: Don't stick cards on people; they may feel treated like objects. And if you have a spare minute, have a look around the room and make an inventory out loud in whatever way you like. Say, der Stuhl, das ist ein Stuhl, fünf Stühle, or whatever. Lists and lies. Some people are compulsive list makers: shopping lists, to-do lists, wish lists. The possibilities are endless. If you aren't one of these people already, pretend to become one. But of course, write the lists in German from now on, especially your shopping lists. You could also get together with a fellow student and invent various new lists. And of course, you can either lie in order to use the words you already know, 
or look up words and broaden your vocabulary. Bilderbuch. This is a game for three people, as we would like to encourage you to find some fellow German students to work with. The three of you take turns. One person draws an object on a piece of paper, while the other two try to guess what the object is and what it's called in German. The first one who guesses the German word for it scores a point. Little Freud. This is a great game and a great way to get to know somebody, regardless of whether you do it to learn German or not. We'll give you a version for two people, which is also ideally suited to be done online. So chat away. The two people each have a piece of paper in front of them, hidden from the other. Now take turns to propose an object category like vegetable, type of house, body of water, type of bird, beverage, type of furniture, fruit, etc. Each of them then writes down what they think the other person would be if they were indeed a fruit, vegetable, or type of bird, not according to looks or likes, but in tune with their perceived character. In the end, after ten to twenty categories, all the information is revealed and exchanged, and it's really quite fascinating to find out what the other person really thinks of you. Of course, this game requires a somewhat broader knowledge of German vocabulary, but if you're a beginner, do it with a dictionary. It's a great way to learn new nouns, and the more exotic ones you can just store away for passive knowledge. You'll never forget Nachtigall, or indeed Kröte, if you were thought of as being a nightingale or a toad.